Now that I showed you this, I'm going to show you an application of this in Lower Huron and in Bakken. This is the Lower Huron. I'm not going to go into detail where it is. This is in Kentucky. What's interesting about both of these applications is the, the, the models that we have developed come from completely public data. Nothing was done by, uh, after this, of course, right now we, we're working with one of the major producers in Marcellus to do the same thing for them. And if we can do this with this type of data, imagine what we can do when we have a lot of good data that actually uh, the companies are not planning to share. This is the porosity, the pay thickness, the depth maps that we get. And this is what we said for lower Huron. We, we do this and we'll see this change, right? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, that, that was in east-west. This is in north-south, right? And then you put together uh, that, and you see how it works in three months, 36 months, 60 months, and 120. You see where your, where your fluid essentially mostly coming from. The, the size of these uh, black one is, is increasing. Now, one of the things we can do, actually, we'll take... We'll take one of, uh, like, this is, uh, this is uh, three months, right? I can, I ha remember the tornado chart I showed you? I know what is the average, what is the minimum and the maximum that I can expect from uh, this area, uh, that, 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 from this area, or from this area. And if I take, uh, put a new well there, what I can expect to, to produce in three months. One way that I, I calibrate that, I take the latest wells that I have drilled, I take those out of my database, I perform this analysis, then I put those wells back in to see if they fit. And when you do that in this particular case, uh, for RRQI2, we dis, uh, we, uh, our analysis showed that uh, uh, your first year cumulative production is going to be between 27 MCF or to, 20, to 39 MCF. And the new well that we used it as blind data set came out to be 33.9, so it falls there. And the same thing is true here. That tells you essentially your partitioning is correct. That's how you calibrate your partitioning. Uh, the same thing as we did before, we use, we use data from 1982 to 2004 to build a uh, train and history match the model. And we use the data that we had from 25, 2005 to 2008 as blind history match to make sure that, that our model is correct. And this is the result that we got. You have rate versus time in dots here and cum versus time over here. Uh, the, the red is a TDM, uh, top-down model, and uh, the act, this one, the blue, is actual. And if you go on a well-by-well -well basis, we have a complete uh, publication on this that gives you a lot more detail uh, on, on how we did this particular uh, field. Uh, so you have up to here, you have a, a history matching, and after that, you have a blind history matching. And now for Bakken shell, we did the same thing for Bakken shell. The difference is Bakken is producing oil. This is, uh, and as you know, probably Bakken has uh, three layers, upper Bakken, middle Bakken, and lower Bakken. Uh, upper Bakken is completely shale. Middle Bakken is a sort of a, a limestone type of thing. So this is uh, upper Bakken, this is middle Bakken. And this is the maps that, again, completely uh, public data. Uh, pay thickness and the porosity maps that we got. And for upper Bakken, this is resistivity and pay thickness for middle Bakken. And again, this one is for middle Bakken, and we did our pattern recognition technology here, and you see the change that for the part of the reservoir we concluded on, we can tell where we have produced the most. And uh, then we go north-south, and again, the same thing. We'll see how this uh, field has been uh, Depleted. Now, this is depletion in two dimensions when you look at the entire map. And as you can see from 12 months to 36 months, uh, as you go, that how does it change? The, again, our sweet, sweet spot is a dynamic property. The sweet spot change as a function of time based on where do you drill, how you produce it. And you can track it using that. And this is your remaining reserve as of January of 2010. For that part of the well, it tells you where do you have most of your, your fluid and how you can increase your probability of success of placing the new well in order to get the best result. Same thing from here. Uh, from April 2006 to January 2010, we model and history match. From February 2010 to July 2010, we uh, used blind to uh, history match. And this is the result for upper Bakken. You can see we got a very good uh, match for our results. And this is for the middle Bakken. And you can see we got 
quite reasonable match. And the shaded area, again, is the part that is completely blind. One of the nice things about analyzing this is, okay, once I do this, now what can I learn from it? Well, you can generate very quickly, you can generate what I call type curves. I can take my production as a function of time and see how my production changes in a particular well. I can do it well by well, I can do it for groups of well, and I can do that for the entire field. And I can, tell, I, I can see how this uh, formation thickness changes my production because sometimes I'm 100% sure about my data, sometimes I'm not. So this type curve tells me for this particular well, my production looks like, if, if you want to use it for, to do history matching, or you can identify the prosody, how, what kind of impact prosody has on this particular your production uh, in uh, Q versus time. The sense, and, and again, the sensitivity analysis you can perform. The beauty of it is you can perform this with click of one button, and it takes more than a few seconds for you uh, to get this. So in conclusion, we uh, talked about top-down modeling that provides an alternative to numerical reservoir simulation. Those of you who work in shale, you know it's, it's an incredibly complex and hard to build conventional numerical reservoir simulators and history match them successfully uh, in shale. So this provides an alternative uh, to that. Uh, you make no major assumptions uh, and biases into the modeling and you let the, you let the uh, reservoir speak for itself just got to look for those, uh, those of us who are male in the audience, we, we're known to be not very good listeners. Well, this is a practice. You have to learn to listen to the reservoir. And the, the, every, every MCF of uh, gas that is produced, every barrel of oil that's, that is produced, carries the signature of geology and fluid flow through porous media with it. The question is, can we deduce that information from, the, from this? And what we're proposing is this, this is one technique that can help in that area. So uh, it's cost effective and relatively quick compared to uh, doing a reservoir simulation. Thank you very much for your attention and questions.